lot of people are asking for images from NASA. Why NASA is not taking the Atlas images? Where are those images, etc., etc. So I wanted to give you some clarity in terms of what NASA can and cannot do, and using the assets that NASA has, how the pictures are going to look like, right? So the first set of images are going to be coming tomorrow. Today is uh, November 18th. Tomorrow, NASA is set to release some images. Uh, definitely, there will be more images NASA will be releasing between now and December 19th when the Comet 3 Atlas comes closer to Earth. So there, if you go to this website and look up on internet, you should be able to quickly find a link to their uh, broadcast. I will also go live and I will show you the broadcast relayed on my channel as well. You can come to my channel and look at live. That is the plan for now. So back in October, Comet 3 Atlas came close to Mars around 0.3 astronomical units. When it is passing Earth, it is passing as 1.8 astronomical units. Each astronomical unit is the distance between the Earth and the Sun. So it's like a one-third of the distance from the Sun to the Earth. That's how close Atlas is, Comet 3 Atlas is going uh, close to the Mars and then it, it essentially going towards the Sun. And it went behind the Sun and now it is coming close to Earth and going to Jupiter, right? Now, when it is going close to the Mars, there were opportunities for Mars orbiters, the ones that rotate around Mars. Those satellites can take a picture of Comet 3 Atlas. So this is the picture from the European Space Agency. Mars Express took this picture and kind of looks beautiful. It shows like a tiny dot with some kind of a coma behind and that is the picture Mars Express took and then ESA released it quickly. But NASA got three orbiters that are circling around Mars. NASA got the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, right? So this was, this has that high-rise camera. This is really good. And then Mars Odyssey, which is another orbiter. And I believe there is one more called Maven. So they have three orbiters that are going around Mars and they can take some pictures. So let's understand what these orbiters can and cannot do. So we have the MRO, we have the Odyssey and the Maven. Those are the three assets NASA got that are circling around Mars. They are primarily designed to look at the surface of the Mars, right? So I'm myself coming in the picture. Let me move me out a little bit. Um, okay, I made myself a little smaller. Okay, so Mars Odyssey was launched back in 2001. And then the reconnaissance was launched 2005. Even though it was launched 2005, this got really good camera. And Maven was released, Maven was launched 2013. So when people are thinking of NASA taking pictures from Mars, they're expecting stuff like that, right? Which is maybe an encounter with Mars. I'm going to see this huge tail, this huge comet. I might see all the surface details. So I don't want to shatter your dreams, but I wanted to set some expectations. It won't be bigger than the pixel when Mars orbiters looks at it. It's very, it's going to be tiny. Uh, it will be interesting, definitely, if we capture some surface details. There are several assets NASA got that can take much better pictures than those. When we are expecting the pictures from the 3A Atlas, from pictures from NASA, don't expect like surface details like this way, right? Don't expect that you're going to see something like this. Uh, you, are, might, you might be seeing something like this, like a small dot. 
at least from the Mars orbiters whenever it is taking pictures. Uh, the reason for that was it's quite simple, right? When we take pictures from the Earth, we can see the coma, we can see all the details. But when you are taking pictures from orbiters, which are not designed to take pictures of stars or comets or anything that is moving, uh, they pretty much go with a very small exposure of time. So you may not see a whole lot of details. They have huge sensors on them, but those sensors actually works negatively because the bigger the sensor it is, the smaller the dot it is. So you have to zoom in and you're pixelated if you are zooming in too much. So that's the problem that we are going to get into. So if high-rise takes the picture, your picture might look like this. It might have a little coma and stuff like that. The CTX, another orbiter sensor can take a picture like this, which is actually slightly better. Another one creates a smudge like this one. Uh, so you, you, you are seeing the pictures that NASA may be able to produce from the Mars orbiters, right? The bigger the sensor compared to my camera sensor, I'm just showing you the comparison. It's almost like 10 times bigger, right? So that's what you are dealing with. Uh, the reason why, the reason why you should not expect a lot of pictures from Mars orbiter, a lot of good pictures from Mars orbiter was the high-rise camera is like a push broom camera, right? When I say push broom, it's a cleaning broom, the one that pushes the dust away in the house on the surface. Is it actually is like that? It tracks the surface of the Mars and brings it back to the computer and the computer creates the huge Mars image that is needed. So that was the design for the high res camera. It creates a great resolution, but it is not a like a one shot camera, right? So the long exposures are not possible. Like so if they even if it tries to take it, it's going to be like a lines, right? So it can take a very small five to six milliseconds kind of pictures. And with that, you don't see a lot of tail. All you're going to see like is a star, right? So it does not have tracking. Like whenever we are pointing the telescope towards the comet, we are taking 60 seconds exposure without moving. Even though we have atmosphere between us and the comet, we are still taking better pictures than the Mars orbiter kind of taking pictures, right? Because it is moving fast and it is taking a very small uh, time frame from a picture standpoint. So you should not expect a whole lot. Uh, NASA definitely will do a good job with the other assets they have. So they said in their uh, press statement, they will not only show the arbiter's pictures, but also other assets as well. So we might see some good pictures from the ground-based telescopes as well. Okay. What to expect for in this field of view? This big sensor, you are seeing like a tiny dot. So we have to zoom in. Of course, we are going to zoom in, but we'll see what they will release. I'll definitely share my analysis on those pictures with you. Rather than Mars Orbiter, we should expect pictures from Hubble or James Webb Telescope I just put my telescope next to it. Uh, but anyway, the, we, that's what we should expect. So Hubble and JWST, uh, whenever they have time, they should take pictures and we should be expecting very good pictures from, from them, which is going to help. I'm looking at the timeline, what Hubble is observing. I don't think they have Comet 3 Atlas on the target uh, from Hubble standpoint. I don't see on the JWST as well. Uh, I looked at the calendar. It doesn't show a lot of future calendar, but I'm not seeing a whole lot of activity on the three atlas on these. If Webb and uh, Hubble takes pictures, we might see a better picture than the Mars orbiter pictures. So they also have, NASA also got several ground-based telescopes and those are going to do a fabulous job, either the one on the, in the Hawaii or the Mauna Kea uh, or Arizona. Any one of those are going to do a very good job at taking pictures of 
comet 3 atlas uh, those pictures are going to look like this right these are just a simulated images based on our expectation how these images will look from the ground based telescopes nasa got i'll see you all tomorrow thank you so please subscribe to my channel and click on the notifications button you are going to get a notification whenever i post a new video or when i go live thank you